So things just got very interesting at Michigan. Woo, baby. Very, very interesting. Hi, I am Captain Boy, and I'm your host of the 10-Minute Sports Report. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in. Didn't get around to it Friday. Just absolutely dead from the diarrhea um, la- uh, at the end of last week. That just kind of killed me. Very little sleep. So we are rejuvenated after a wonderful weekend of college football and NFL and hanging out with my wife and all of that. So um, got uh, some great stuff for you today. Um, I got an update on... The Michigan cheating scandal. I got college football results, NFL results, hockey results, MLB playoff results. Um, I got a lot to cover. It's not going to fit in 10 minutes, so I'm just going to warn you right now. Um, I, my question f- for for you to comment down below are are um, towards are going to be at the end. So you got to either fast forward now and then comment or wait until the end. But I'm going to jump right in here because we got a lot, as I said, a lot to go over. All right, so here's the deal. Um, it came out today, just right before I got on, like an hour ago, not right before, that Connor Stallions, the suspended staffer, so Michigan ended up suspending the staffer at the heart of the sign-stealing scandal. Michigan did that Friday, Saturday, something like that. Um, it, he's at the heart of this. He purchased, in his own name, more than tickets to more than 30 games over the past three seasons at 11 different Big Ten schools. The scope of the University of Michigan alleged sign stealing operation includes both video evidence of electronics prohibited by the NCAA to steal sign and a significant paper trail sources told ESPN. First problem with this. In these investigations, I recently found out the school's Being investigated are not allowed to talk. So if the schools aren't allowed to talk, who is leaking this information to ESPN? And I have a problem with that. And I'm going to have a problem with that going forward. We should know nothing about this investigation until judgment comes down. Okay, so that's that's my first problem. Um, I understand this makes me sound like a crotchety Michigan fan, but that's my first problem with this. And that will be my first problem going forward. I don't want this information like like. If the school isn't allowed to comment on an ongoing investigation and the NCAA isn't allowed to comment on an ongoing investigation, then why is the NCAA commenting on an, an ongoing investigation? And who are these sources telling ESPN all of this stuff? That's my number one problem going forward, bar none. Stallion forwarded the tickets he bought to at least three different people in different areas of the country, which hints at the breadth of the operation. The NCAA is expected to receive video evidence this week of of illegal technology used in scouting tied to tickets purchased by Stallion, according to sources. The, The video evidence better be on a phone or camera or something pointed right at the sign people, the people on the sideline doing the signs and it better be locked in because if it's just video evidence of stallions at the actual game, I'm going to have a big problem with this. The lawyer and me are being like, okay, well, he's just at the game. Okay. And I'll, and I'll get to my statements here. Sources confirmed to ESPN that Stallion purchased tickets on both sides of the stadium from across each bench for the Ohio State game with Penn State on Saturday. Michigan plays both teams in the upcoming week. According to sources, the tickets purchased by Stallions were not used Saturday. Stallions name emerged publicly in an ESPN story Friday. He was suspended with pay by Michigan later that day. Once his name came out, Every single Big Ten team was looking for tickets purchased in his name. Again, the NCAA is leaking information about an investigation that they're not supposed to be commenting on to get help from schools that that they would not be able to get information that they would not be able to get by themselves. That's my first take. None of the 11 schools told ESPN told ESPN none of the 11 schools that none of the tickets that's the word I'm missing that the 11 schools told ESPN about involved Michigan as an opponent so you can't say he was just there watching Michigan games watching Michigan his own team 
per source. These games involved either one or two teams that the Wolverines were playing later that season. Stallions did not respond to conference. The Big Ten Conference considers the integrity, blah, blah, blah. Sources indicated that Stallions forwarded the tickets to three individuals with the ticket transfer showing up through data ticket transferring. Those tickets were used by individuals other than Stallions to get into the game, including one in the video the NCAA is expected to receive. Again, this video, if it is just of a member that he forwarded at the game, sitting across the sideline, holding up his phone, you don't know what he was taking a picture of. Okay? That's the Michigan fan. Obviously, common sense, if two plus, if it walks like a duck and quacks like a duck, it's a bleeping duck. Okay? But here's the deal. You can't. You can't, if it's just a photo of him at the game, or of, of this member at the game, like I, like, I want definitive proof, okay? Again, looks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a, it, 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 it's a bleeping duck. But, I don't want any punishment unless if they have hard proof that Michigan was actually stealing the signs. It's one thing to say, you had staffers at the game or you had a staffer that paid for tickets to pay that other people were at the game and they were your opponents. 100% suspicious. 1,000% probably up to something. But unless if you have hard proof of them actually using video to steal the signs, that's one thing. So again, it's now become two different things. One, they're not allowed to you're not allowed to scout opponents in the same season. That's one. So they can improve. Well, I don't even know if they can prove. Again, th this guy bought it with his own money. Two, they are now saying that they use video, basically doing what the Patriots were doing, taping people, doing what the Astros were doing, using video, which is also prohibited. Um, so, so here's the deal. My Michigan fandom is saying... Where's the proof, right? I want hard evidence or or no punishment. I want, if you have hard evidence of them actually stealing signs with video cameras and you have the video of what they were taping, I want proof, I, I want that proof. If you can't link the staffer, since he bought it with his own, if you can't say, Harbaugh was paying, then repaying the staffer. Michigan was paying this credit card bill. They were reimbursing him, et cetera, et cetera. If he wasn't getting any reimbursement, he might have been doing this on his own. Now, as a college football analyst in me, as I've already been talking eight minutes, so I'm going to speed it up here. I've already been talking eight minutes. Yeah, Michigan was probably bending the rules a little bit. And my favorite comment from our YouTube channel says comes from my mother and i'm sure this is the only school in the ncaa where this happens right that's my other thing everyone's doing this michigan get caught because they had it i i honestly believe the ncaa does not like harbaugh because he would not tell them the truth and he quote unquote lied about buying this kid a cheeseburger all right, so that pretty much was the 10-minute sports report. However, I am going to breeze through this rather quickly. All right, so Michigan, Penn State was going to the sideline, or Michigan State was going to the sidelines to get their signal. Didn't help them at all. Michigan blew them out 49 nothing. So I don't think the signs were the, stealing the signs were the issue there. Comment, shout out to my dad. The game of the weekend, Penn State, Ohio State. Penn State can't throw the forward pass more than 15 yards. Ohio State had dominant defense there. 120 to 12 wasn't even that close, more like 20 to 6. Florida State can't, after Riley Leonard got hurt, beat Duke 38-20. Washington State needed a 12-point fourth quarter to down Arizona State 15 to 7. Oklahoma staved off UCF Tying two-point conversion attempt to tie the game at, at the end of regulation, 31-29. Texas survives Houston, 31-24. Quinn Ewers is out. The Texas quarterback is out multiple weeks with a shoulder injury. Oregon beat Washington State, 38-24. Virginia 
One in five Virginia beat North Carolina on their home field, 31-27. Tennessee just scored 27 straight points to beat, I'm sorry, Alabama scored 27 straight points to beat Tennessee, 34-20. Old Miss beat Auburn, 28-21. Utah beat USC for the fourth straight time, 34-32. Knocks the Trojans out of the playoff race and Caleb Williams out of the Heisman. LSU romped on Army. Missouri beat South Carolina. Air Force beat Navy in the Battle of America. Tulane beat North Texas. Minnesota completed a forward pass more than Iowa did to beat them 12 to 10 and UCLA beat Stanford 42 to 7. Little NFL action for you. Jag um I covered the Jags Saints. Um however the Jaguars beat the Saints uh 31-24 Thursday night football wouldn't have covered that. Uh Taylor Swift um Taylor Swift's boyfriend and uh, and his teammates beat the Chargers 31-17. The Eagles beat the Dolphins 31-17 to also improve the 6 and 1 much like the Chiefs. The Chicago Bears beat the with a d- former Division 2 quarterback beat the Las Vegas Raiders 30 to 12. The Browns save off the Colts by point 39-38. Patriots beat beat the Bills, Giants beat the Commanders, Falcons beat the Bucks, Ravens crushed the Lions 38-6, which was a surprise. Lions were 5-1 and one at the time. Steelers beat the Rams 24-17. Seahawks beat the Cardinals. And Russell Wilson beat the Green Bay Packers 19-17. All right, some NFL or some NHL action, I should say. Let me back it up a little bit because I did not come prepared at Oh, so we will start with Friday and see if anything happened Friday. None of the teams I cover play Friday. Saturday, the Anaheim Ducks lost to the Arizona. I don't know Arizona's name, so help me out with that one, everyone. The uh, They lost to Arizona 2-1. Two, two, uh, let's see here. The Colorado Avalanche beat the Carolina Hurricane 6-4. And I'm just making sure the, the the Las Vegas Golden Knights beat the Chicago Black Blackhawks five to three. Here's the thing with that: the on Modern Family, which is a great TV show, everyone should go watch it. Very funny. There's a um, there's an episode where all of these men are getting together. Uh, Cam and Mitch, they are the uh, gay characters in the TV show. And so it's a whole bunch of their friends. And he goes, "I we got to hurry up. I have tickets to the Blackhawks. And <laughs> one of his friends goes, you, I didn't know they were allowed to call the teams that. And he goes, Black Hawks. And so every time I say Black Hawks, I want to say Black Hawks. Insert the word here. So that's funny. Uh, also on Saturday, the Seattle Kraken lost to the New York Rangers 4-1. to one. On Sunday, the Anaheim Ducks lost to the Boston Bruins 3-1. to one. And today is Monday. So just a quick look at the standings here around. So in the Eastern Conference, the Atlantic, the Boston Bruins are 5-0 and and lead that. Um... And lead that there. Uh, let's go to the Western Conference. All the teams that we are rooting for, paying it, tracking, are in the Western Conference. Colorado and Avalanche are 5-0 and and sit atop of the Western Conference Central Division. And in the Pacific, the Vegas Golden Knights are 6-0 and and sit on top of that. The, the Anaheim Ducks are 1-4. and They're very bad. I did not realize the Anaheim Ducks were so bad. Right above the Anaheim Ducks at one and four, where the Seattle Krakens also at one and four. So, uh, we the two teams we cover are at the top, and the other two are at the bottom. Again, everyone, thank you so much for hanging in there. We we are almost there. So over the weekend, here's what happened in um, the world of baseball. So if we back it up all the way to Thursday, I'm going to get you all caught up. So Thursday. Arizona beat Philadelphia 2-1 to one to win a game to make that series two games to one. 
The Astros beat the Texans 10-3 to to tie that series at 2. Then on Friday, in a great game, Houston beat the Texas Rangers again 5-4 to to take a 3-2 series lead. Arizona beat Philadelphia 6-5 to to tie that series at 2. Then on Saturday, Philadelphia beat Arizona 6-5. To one to take a three to nothing series lead, and that happened Saturday, so I need Sunday. Last night, the Texas Rangers, I did not know this until just now, beat the Houston Astros nine to two to even that series at three to make that a winner take all game seven. Today, right now, active in the bottom of the second inning, the Arizona Diamondbacks. In a win or go home situation for the Diamondbacks, trailing three games to two, lead the Philadelphia Phillies three to nothing. They win this, they force game seven. If Philadelphia comes back, they make it the World Series. And then tonight, winner take all game seven. Houston or Texas Rangers at the Houston Astros. During the regular season, the Houston Astros were worse at home than they were on the road. They're better on the road than they are at home. They have a losing record at home. They were like 40 and 44 at home. All right, everyone, comment down below. What do we think of this Michigan situation? Um, Yeah. So uh, make your prediction. Was the staffer doing this by himself? Is the NCAA still being ridiculous? Should they investigate every single team? Okay, let, let me back it up. Comment down below. NCAA still being ridiculous and does the or did Harbaugh know that the staffer was doing this and did you make it all the way to the end thank you everyone so much for listening remember God loves you may God bless you wash your hands you filthy animal uh, and we'll see you sometime later this week peace out